Hello there my YouTube friends. I thought I would make a quick introduction video because I forgot to make one last week for what you're about to see which is going to be split up over about probably three videos I would think um, which is basically my first sort of few workouts back at the gym after being given the all clear. Um, what you're going to see is the second day's workout first which is the legs work because actually the first day's workout which was would have been the Tuesday I actually was that excited to get up the gym and work out I forgot to bring any of my stuff that I needed to record anything and when I walked in the gym there was a lot of people in there that I'd never seen before so it sort of knocked us for six a little bit and I was just so you get to get in and get a workout done that I just thought no nah, I, I need this for myself I need to do this first week for myself so what you're going to be seeing in this first one is probably going to be my legs workout the next one after that will more than likely be shoulders and arms and then the next one of that will be my second chest and back workout because I train each body part twice in a week and that'll take us through six days of the week and I normally do the seventh day which is normally be a day that I, would, I call me active rest day which is cardio day but obviously this week I didn't have that but guys anyway I hope you enjoy the workouts gotta remember these are me doing a comeback from a massive shoulder injury that was kept us out for a long time and I can guarantee you now guys the only really thing is I was in a lot of pain throughout most of the workouts but we'll go through that with you in the video I'll talk you through some of the stuff that I've done in that so hope you enjoy guys and I'll catch you in a minute Good guys, about to enter the gym. Start off with the legs. It's not a good thing when you've got legs day, especially after you finish legs day. We're basically three flights of steps to go up in order to get in there. There's the door to the gym. See you inside, guys. Thank you. Welcome to Stevie's gym, guys, where I've been training for probably about nearly 20 years. Um, and you can see here we're doing front squats to start with and you can see again I'm, I've got literally just the bar because being my first day back at doing legs I need to get myself back into that groove get me, make sure that I'm set up properly make sure I'm feeling it the right way and when I start with like, getting in the groove it's making sure that if his body's in the right position and it feels right there's nothing uncomfortable about what I've got to do and then to warm myself up, get myself prepared for what I'm about to do. You know, it's do about so 20 reps or so, like this, just to make sure everything feels comfortable, that nothing feels slightly out or slightly disjointed, and whether I need to stretch something off a bit more. Once I know everything's bang on, then it's a case of get my first bit of weight on it, which is normally a warm-up weight. You can see here, I've got about 5 kilos aside on it, Plus whatever the bar is, which like I say, I don't tend to worry about the bar. When I write stuff down, it's the weights that I have on the bar, not the weight of the bar, because bars are different lengths, so they weigh different amounts. Some of them have your thick bars like this one, so you've got yeah, others have thin bars. So you never know what bar you're going to be using at the time. So it's better just to carry on working with the actual weight, and that way, if I increase, I know I've increased because it's the weight itself that I'm measuring off. So it's about five kilos aside here. And again, this is just to make sure everything feels right. Make sure I'm in the right groove and make sure my body is going to be ready for is to up the weight a little bit. I'm not going to go up by much at all because again, I'm just coming back from an injury. And you can see because it's actually front squats, the actual weight is resting on my front shoulders. You know, which thankfully didn't actually bother us so much. Is what I thought it might. I thought it would really sort of give us some jip, but it didn't. So I'm doing the front squats for the simple fact is that if I had done rear squats, then I would have to have my arms positioned further back, and it would literally would be stretching out my shoulder joints, you know. And I've already just done a chest and back workout the day before, so the last thing I wanted to do was to be trying to sort of stretch my shoulders back too far in order to grip the bar. So front squats is a good alternative plus front squats will affect literally the quads more than anything else at all whereas rear squats will affect the whole of the leg the front squats hit the quads a lot harder and a lot more so 
that's why I decided to go for the front squats rather than anything else. You can see, yeah, I moved up again. I've got about 10 kilo plates on each side now. So even though I'm only lifting 20 kilos, I do it in such a way that I can feel every rep really quite harshly. And you can see with how far I'm going down, I'm literally going ass to the grass. You know, it's 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 well it's deep and I couldn't get any deeper if I tried, you know, that, that is as far down as I can get. And I'm just making sure that I'm working it real tough, real hard, keeping the momentum going till the last rep, and then I sit into it, let it stretch out a bit before pushing back up, you know, which is normally the hardest thing to do. If you sort of do like a rest and pause style thing at the bottom, that is really, really tough going. Yeah, so again, on this one, I was done sort of, normally speaking, I would do one warm up weight and then I would increase to whatever would be my maximum poundage for time, for the time being with us literally just making a sort of the comeback after the injury. And I would do like four sets of the actual maximum weight I'm going to do for a period of time. This one I ended up doing, obviously, the bar. Then I went up to five kilos. Then I went jumping up to me 10 kilos aside. So when I've done that, it's still a case of that. I don't class the one with the bar as even a warm up weight. Okay, so I'd still do five sets all told. The one warm up weight with the five kilos aside. Then jumped to me 10 kilos aside. That was the maximum pound I was going to do for that day, knowing that I'm bringing myself back. I'm just trying to get the feel again, get myself back into that swing of things. And it was four sets with the maximum poundage that I was going to be doing. Yeah, and I do that pretty much for all of the exercises. So most things will end up being sort of five sets, all told. Sometimes there may be six sets if i have getting it wrong and the weight is still way too light on the sort of the next time I've gone up. Then I may end up doing the sixth set because I like to get in the four sets at least of the maximum poundage for the time being. Yeah, you can see there, I'm puffing away and panting away because it's, it's tough going when you're doing legs, guys. It really is. Then next we'll move on to 45 degree leg press. This is all about, first off, get, trying to get things right again. I've only got basically 220 kilos per side on. The weight of the machine, again, it could be anything from 30 to 50 kilos. That's why I only work out what I'm doing with the actual weight I put on. Because you just don't know, you know there is another 45 degree leg press machine next to it, which may weigh less. Yeah, so I never worry about what the weight of the machine is. I only ever count the weight I put on it. So there's 220s per side, which is like 80 kilos on there. And again, I think at the 20 odd reps or so, you can count them for yourself if you wish. Yeah, I think that they have 20 odd reps or so on it. Just getting the feel of it and you can see how far I'm coming down. I'm coming all the way down, but my back is still staying against the machine you know because a lot of people when they come down their lower backs raise off of it which is putting a lot of strain on the lower back which is what you don't want here yeah, that the stress and the strain has to go through the actual legs itself that's where you want it all you can see is there where i set myself up set my legs up correctly before i even remotely start you can see i'm coming all the way down as far as i possibly can because my legs are hitting my chest and it's sort of starting to crush my chest in. These have got quite a narrow stance to go in. But you can see how my hips and my lower back do not come off that bench at all. They stay on that bench. My legs do not lock out fully. There's still a bend in the knee the whole time. Never do I lock out fully. And I come all the way down as far as I can before pushing back up again. Never lock your legs out, guys, because if you lock your legs out, that's when you've got a chance, especially when the weights increase, increase, and increase, of literally snapping your knee yeah, and doing a lot of damage. You can see from this angle how where my legs are, that they're a narrow stance, that they're exactly the same level down, and they're exactly the same level in. I'm sure that is important to keep it so that you've got 
a good balanced structure and because you can see that I've got a narrow stance there with my feet facing directly facing forward that is to do with I want to hit the outer sweep of my leg okay if I wanted to hit the inner quads then I would have them further out my legs further out on the machine and possibly have me toes pointed out over which would affect the actual what's called the tear tear duct one but I don't want to affect that at the minute I'm wanting to affect the outer sweep of the quad so I work very narrow and I also work about middle as you can see from this angle I work roughly about middle I think that's so it'll affect my quads and a little bit of my hamstrings if I had my feet further up towards the top of the machine it would affect more the hamstrings than what it does now right now and if I had them further down it would put more emphasis on the quadricep and potentially on my knees which I don't want to do that's why I don't go too far down because I don't want to put too much tension through my knees but you can see again from that angle there's always a slight bend in the knee you never fully lock out and I never stop the motion till I'm on my last rep yeah it's got to keep that motion going that's what keeps the uh, it keeps that pump going through the legs it, it keeps the thing it's basically because class is constant tension which is what you want you want constant tension on your thighs when you're working out to work them to the fullest and then you don't need to do too many exercises you know you see so many guys in the gym that they'll do literally six seven eight exercises for something and i will do so sort of six exercises a week for body part, but only three on that particular day. Then I'll do a three on another day because I work out my legs will work out twice a week. My chest, my back, my arms, my shoulders all get worked out twice a week. I do roughly about three exercises, sometimes four, in order to make sure I've done it enough. And if you put enough into those exercises, you don't need to do no more than that. That is it. That done, not finished. Yeah, you can see there in my face, I'm straining quite a bit. But I'm not straight at the point where I'm in a lot of pain. I'm just, my legs are really working tough. Yeah, and I can go way heavier than that. Yeah, I can go way, way heavier than that. But right now, I'm making a comeback. So I'm slowing myself down and I'm just keeping the constant tension on my thighs to make sure they're working tough. These things, guys, these things are an absolute killer. Yeah, they're called sissy squats. And they're called sissy squats for a reason. Because when you're doing them, you look like a right sissy. Yeah, I've got no weight at all in my arms. You can see that. I'm literally doing it with just my body weight. And you can see there, I'm like literally sort of, it's like already my legs are burning. They're hurting like crazy. And these things just finish them off amazingly. Yeah, a sissy squat is so tough. Because you've got to lie sort of, you sort of, you're resting back into it, so you're lying slightly back. You're not going straight up and down. You're sort of lying slightly back in which you'll probably see better in another angle. You know how I sort of lie back into it a little bit. Yeah. But they are an absolute killer. They, they absolutely murder your legs after you're done. That's why I like to leave them to last. Because if I do them first, they're not going to be as bad. But if you're doing them last after you've already done two massive exercises for your quads these are going to just absolutely kill them. So you can see right now, I was standing up, completely upright, and as soon as I start the exercise, I sort of, I'm lying, I'm leaning back into it to keep the constant tension on my thighs. Yeah, I go down, I do it, but I don't go to the straight up position, because if you go to the straight up position, that starts to, that can actually then take the tension out of the thigh for just that split second, and that split second rest can be enough to, to thing it, you know, but when you keep that sort of slight lean back over, it keeps a constant tension on the thigh and it can burn like absolute crazy, you know. It's, it was mental, the pain I was going through. That, and I, As you can see, if you're counting the repetitions at all, I wasn't getting up to even 10, I think. I think I was lucky to hit eight reps, yeah. And that's with no weight, yeah. Beforehand, when I used to do them, I used to do them with sort of, 20 kilos in my arms, you know, and I'm hoping to build back up to something like that. But right now, just doing that alone was absolutely bloody havoc. And like I said, the very next day when I got up, 
my god the pains that was going through my legs was absolutely crazy and then the day after was even worse again i could literally to try and stand up or to sit down or to walk around the pain going through my legs with the lactic acid buildup was incredible so here we go for the last exercise for my legs which is the lying leg curl for the hamstrings i tend not to do much in the way of hamstring work yeah i'll do one exercise for it perhaps again because normally speaking it's time constraints for me more than anything you know it's I'll get up there at a certain time in order to get home and have something to eat it within a reasonable time and I need to sort of get through it and the workouts generally speaking can take me anything from an hour and a half to two hours to do by the time I've had that little bit of a rest set my camera up when I'm doing it with the camera it takes slightly longer yeah so what you can see again the way I've got myself positioned it's to place the emphasis on the hamstring and the glutes I really want to work the hamstring and glutes to the best. If I lay completely out flat on the machine, instead of like you can see that I'm raised on my elbows, if I was completely flat, it would put more emphasis on just the actual hamstring because it would be in the hamstring doing even more of the work. Whereas the position I'm at now, my backside is actually doing some of the work as well to help, which is what I want. I want to incorporate the backside as well as. The hamstrings in this exercise you know so and again i start off with one warm up one then jump the weight up which you can see it's still really light but i've never been that strong with my hamstrings anyway especially on that machine it's stevie's gym is a very very old gym very hardcore gym and i think a lot of the machines have sort of because of where some of the lads have not looked after the stuff and left stuff he piled up and wrong thing he's a lot of the pulleys aren't working properly that aren't straight properly so even though you might have 15 only 15 kilos on there you might feel like you end up lifting bloody 20 kilos plus especially this machine that you can see on my left hand side if you're looking at the screen now on the left hand side it's a leg extension machine that leg extension machine literally you can have 20 kilos on there and it'll feel more like really 30 or 40 kilos just because of the way it is, you know, the pulleys aren't right. The All the system itself just isn't working correctly. So it feels way heavier to lift than what it actually is, you know, and that's one of the things you've got to watch for when you go to a gym, that you're not necessarily lifting the weight that it says you off it's a machine if the machine hasn't been looked after correctly. Yeah, but yeah, I'm coming to nearly finished. You can see how, <laughs> how sweaty I am here. You know, I'm a sweaty mess. And that's what happens always after legs. You know, I'm always a sweaty mess after legs. I'm pretty much a sweaty mess after every workout, but after legs, the legs are an absolute killer. You know, they really do just murder you. But I love, I love training legs. You know, a lot of people do it, a lot of people. You, you can see a lot of bodybuilders, and you can normally tell the ones that miss leg day. Yeah, you can just you can see them a mile away, and there's a, quite a few of them in the gym that are like that, that'll miss legs day. And you can tell, you get an off tell. If you do legs correctly, it actually has a massive effect on the rest of your body as well, guys. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Catch us in the next one, guys. See you later. So what I believe you were trying to say is thank you. Thank you? You're welcome. What? No, no, no. I, I didn't. I wasn't. Why would I ever <laughs> okay, say that? Okay. I mean... <laughs>